Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1220, Calculus 2 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. Uh, this video represents the first of lecture 36 in our series, which will start section 11.2 about series, which are closely related to the notion of sequences we've talked about before. Now, lecture 36 is mostly going to focus on the idea of a geometric series, very important family of series that we'll talk about very shortly, we first need to introduce what is the idea of a series. So imagine we have a sequence, a sequence will denote it as just a sub n right now, so this is just a list of numbers. Now from a sequence we can construct a new sequence which is referred to as the sequence of partial sums. And it's given by the following formula, s sub n is going to equal the sum where k ranges from 1 to n of the sequence a k. Uh, that is to say, if we expand this sum, we're taking a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 all the way up to here a sub n. So if we just take a, a quick example of such a thing, we could take the sequence a sub n equals 1 over 2 to the n. So this is a this is supposed to be here a sequence. And so our sequence would look like 1 half, uh, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, you get the idea there. And so it's sequence of partial sums, we would take the first term, which is uh, the, first, the first term here, we would just add up together 1 half, that's all there is. The second term we would take 1 half plus 1 fourth, which is going to give us 3 fourths. The third term would be the sum of the, of the previous terms, 1 half plus a fourth plus an eighth, which this will add up to be 7 eighths. Uh, the next term would be 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth, which is going to give us 15 sixteenths, like so. And so the members of this sequence would be 1 half, 3 fourths, 7 eighths, 16, or 15 sixteenths. And so we create a new sequence from a previous sequence by adding together all the terms. So this is a sequence in its own right, of course. And as because as it's a sequence, this partial sum sequence, we could ask things like, is the sequence bounded? Is it monotonic, increasing, decreasing? Is it convergent? Does it have a limit? What seems to be happening here? And although this, these, this information will be related to the original sequence, this information could be, distinct, uh, could be distinct from the previous sequence. So for example, if we take the sequence a sub n right here, this is a bounded decreasing sequence which is convergent it has to be convergent by the monotone convergence theorem notice that our sequence a sub n it'll be bounded between 1 and 0 and in fact this sequence is decreasing it's decreasing and we have that a sub n will approach will approach 0 as n goes to infinity but on the other hand if you look at the sequence of partial sums this sequence, S sub n, it will likewise sit between, uh, oh, I, I realize I wrote it backwards earlier, my mistake, and you should switch this around. Uh, it sits between 1 and 0. Uh, so our sequence Sn will sit between 1 and 0. That part's the same. But notice this sequence, as we go from 1 half to 3 fourths to 7 eighths to 5 sixteenths, this sequence is actually increasing. And as it's a bounded increasing sequence, it's convergent by the monotone convergence theorem. But in this situation, Sn is going to converge towards the number 1. So it's convergent, but it goes to a different location, not necessarily the same place as the sequence here. And as such, we're interested in the limit of this sequence of partial sums. So we would take the limit as n goes to infinity of S sub n. But as S sub n is the sum of the, of the sequence, you're taking the sum of the ak's as k equals 1 here, and, and, and as k goes from 1 to n here. Uh, this, we're going to abbreviate using the following notation. We're going to take the sum, where k equals 1 to infinity here, of a sub k. That should be a k right there. And this right here is going to become an infinite sum. So we add together a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, a6 indefinitely. And this gives us what we refer to as a series. A series is an infinite sum. Now, it's not exactly the same infinite sum as a Riemann sum, uh, like we talk about with integrals, and we'll, we'll, we'll make some distinctions about this in the future, but we have this infinite sum 
It's the sum of all the terms of a sequence, and we call this a series. Now, this thing could be convergent. It could be divergent. It's going to depend on properties of the sequence in play here. Uh, but I want to kind of mention that this idea of a infinite sum, the series is actually quite natural, right? Believe it or not, these infinite series can, in fact, converge, converge to finite numbers, as kind of alluded to in this example. Um, take as another example the sequence uh, b sub n, whose entry, whose nth entry is going to equal the uh, the nth decimal decimal digit of the number pi. You know, so let's see if pi is 3.149, b1 would be 1, b2 would be 4, b3 would be 1, b4 would be 5. You know, keep on going with the idea, with the idea there. And so then we're going to see that pi, we often write as 3.14159, dot, 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 right? This can be expressed as an infinite sum, right? Because this is 3 plus 1 tenth plus 4 one hundredths plus 1 one thousandth plus 5 ten thousandth plus 9 one hundred thousandths. Keep on going. But if we recognize the pattern that's in play here, we could rewrite this thing as 3 plus the sum of, as we allow uh, i to go from 1 to infinity, of our sequence bn over 10 to the i power. Because after all, these numbers 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, these are just the first five numbers in the sequence which we define over here as bn. So when we look at irrational numbers like pi or e, uh, or even rational numbers, we can express every decimal expansion as this infinite sum of a uh, sequence over powers of 10. And therefore, it really this idea of an infinite series is actually quite natural to our number system. Irrational numbers very well lead to these series. And so we'll see over the next several lectures how important that these infinite series turn out to be.